In this video, I want to dive into a bit of a controversial subject, and that is the topic of hacking FileMaker databases. Now, I've never been one to really do a video on how to hack a FileMaker database, but this topic is coming up quite a bit, and people are asking me about it. And obviously, if I don't educate my viewers on this topic, then I'm really doing you a disservice. Now, some of you are going to say, well, Richard, you shouldn't show people how to hack a FileMaker database. Well, I hate to break it, everyone, but hacking a FileMaker database is really easy. Let's start with that. But protecting against that is also really easy. And so I'd rather show you, A, how people are hacking it, and B, more importantly, how to defend against the hack. Because really, prior to FileMaker 13, there was no way to protect against a hack. And what is a hack? And what does it mean to be hacked? And all that kind of stuff. So let's talk about that. So first off, this conversation is completely about someone getting physical control of your FMP12 file. That means they went into your server, or they went on your computer, they put in a thumb drive, they copied the FMP12 file to your thumb drive, and they left. Or somehow they got remote access to your server, and they copied the file off. Or they got access to a backup disk somewhere that you left laying around. Something happened like that. But they're not accessing an online copy. So we're not talking about someone trying to access the live server. In my mind, FileMaker is really secure against an attack like that. I'm not aware of any established hacks that can break FileMaker in that way. Uh, not like there is if you can actually get physical access to the file. So if the file is actually being hosted online and the SSL point-to-point -point encryption is properly enabled, then FileMaker is pretty secure, especially if physical access to that server is well-controlled. So let's say someone gets physical access to your file. Well, let's walk through what happens. They can buy an application on Windows. It doesn't seem to be a Mac application for this, but it is on the Windows side. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, walk you through what we do here. And we have a sample file. I'm going to go ahead and actually create the sample file for you real quick here. I'm in my Windows environment. Create the new file. And then I'm going to go ahead and set up uh, administrative level security and change the default password from admin space to admin something else. It doesn't really matter what it is. This is as long as it's a unknown password to you. And then I can create another administrative level code. And I'm going to put just another user. It could be Sally or Tom or someone else. It doesn't really matter. And I can give them full access as well. Or data entry. Once again, it doesn't really matter. Now I'm going to go ahead and exit. And of course, just like we've discussed in other videos, FileMaker is going to confirm that I know the administrative level access. And what FileMaker does down in the file here is it actually scrambles and turns those passwords into a hash down inside the file. But they're in this FMP12 file. However, there is this program that you can buy called Passware Password Recovery Kit. And you buy this thing. And what you do is you just drag and drop the FileMaker file on here. And it actually goes in there and it actually removes the password for the administrative user. So it doesn't actually give us the ability to read the administrative level password, which is, I guess, a nice thing. So it can't read what the password was, but it does have the ability to actually strip it and remove it. And because it's removed, then we're actually able to gain access to the file. So then, of course, we're going to be able to go ahead and go in here and open this file. So this password program actually creates a copy of the file called unprotected. And it strips the passwords out and makes them blank. So we have administrative account with no password, which auto logs in, which is kind of the default for all FileMaker files. So it's totally hacked the file, right? But it hasn't revealed the password. It simply went into the file hunted through the system till it found where the administrative level security was, and then it just kind of removed it, right? And it did it in such a way that the FileMaker file was unaware that it was tampered with. 
And that's the problem. So that's the whole idea behind the hack, right? So how do we get around this? That's the whole point of this video. I'm not trying to explain to you how to become a devious jerk and hack people's files, right? Of course, someday you might lock yourself out of a file and really need to get into that. And I've actually done that once or twice to myself. That being said, how do you protect yourself from this sort of attack? Well, one, you keep people from actually getting physical access to your file. But two, we go through the process of this right here. We have to open our file into a copy of FileMaker Pro Advanced. Then we go up under Tools, Developer Utilities. And the idea is to set up encryption at rest on this file, which FileMaker doesn't call it encryption at rest right here. They just call it, you know, set up an encrypted database. And the whole idea is that we're enabling that deep level encryption within the file. And the whole point is that if we enable encryption at rest within the FileMaker file, that means that the FileMaker files, as they sit on the computer in that FMP12 file format, they are fully encrypted. They are fully protected. Now, they're not normally like this by default. You have to use the FileMaker Pro Advanced tool to enable encryption at rest. Once you've done that, I can demonstrate right here that we're going to take this file, the same file we just had, but it has the encryption at rest set up on it. I'm going to drag and drop it on the password cracker hacker tool here. And you're going to see this error right here. It cannot break into the file because the encryption at rest prevents it. It's awesome. So that's how you actually stop hackers from breaking into your files. Now, once again, if you're not familiar with encryption at rest and you've kind of skipped to this video because it sounded awesome, go back and watch our video about encryption at rest and understand how it works, how to set it up. It's very, very, very important. But just so you understand that there are real threats to FileMaker databases, but it depends upon the value of what's in your FileMaker database. If you've got recipes to grandma's famous chili, well, maybe you don't need encryption at rest in that file. In fact, a lot of RCC files, we don't generally do this because the data in them is not considered national secrets. However, if you're protecting credit card information, you're protecting medical information, yeah, you might want to use encryption at rest. In fact, it may be mandated by federal law, at least in the United States. And certainly having a tool like this that can break it open so easily is not good. But there's an easy counter to this tool and that is activating the encryption at rest that's built within the FileMaker platform.